The respect for law camp began in 1978 when the Indiana State Police and the Indiana District Optimists brought to life a dream of many years and of many people. That first year served as a foundation for the educational camp, and respect for law camp has since seen more than 1,000 sixth and seventh grade boys and girls pass through its doors. The camp is based on educating young people of their responsibilities toward the laws of their country. Experienced representatives from various criminal justice agencies throughout Indiana share their experiences and expertise with these impressionable and enthusiastic young men and women. One of the camp directors, Trooper Don Jackson of the Indiana State Police, has been with the camp from the beginning. If I could emphasize a couple points that are stressed during the weekend on campus, it would be discipline. And we, the camp is basically education orientated. Uh, the camp is open to the first 150 students that applies and 13 hours of instruction is received by each student during the weekend and it concludes with a banquet that the parents attend and each student has a recognition certificate that is presented. Uh, for the past five years, one of the most interesting and attentive uh, programs that has been presented to the staff and to the students is a presentation by the Indiana Department of Natural Resources. Snakes, the fascination or fear of every boy and girl. And it's not very often that anyone gets this close to a rattlesnake or copperhead, but these conservation officers put on this show many times and have become as well acquainted with these snakes as anyone might want to be. It's their job and they're experts at it. There are other experts here at Respect for Law Camp, too. Troopers from the Indiana State Police are known throughout the nation as experts in their field. And they aren't the only troopers who get a chance to show off. Troopers from Kentucky annually make the long drive from their home state to display some of their equipment and to talk about the duties and responsibilities of a Kentucky State Policeman. Members of the local emergency medical services are on hand each year to explain just what's in one of those large ambulances. They talk about their job and about some of the latest technical aids used in the rescue of accident victims. During the last three years, we've seen a 100% increase in our enrollment. So this speaks well for the recognition of the camp uh, to the people and to the various clubs, many sororities and other groups other than the optimists, uh, the Sortoma Clubs, the Lions Club, JCs, and etc., have saw fit to sponsor youth to our camp, and we're very proud of that. Last year, for the first time, we had a student apply and was accepted to attend out of state. Uh, we also received a certificate last year from the secondary school administrators of the state of Indiana recognizing the camp as having great educational value. We were very proud of that. Certainly one of the things that uh, is great about the camp is the fact that we have people there from uh, several different law enforcement agencies. And we have some of the best from those agencies, and each is uh, more than capable of relating to these youngsters what their individual uh, department does for law enforcement as a whole. FBI agents attend Respect for Law Camp to discuss the responsibilities and jurisdiction of a federal agent. They talk about the type of work they do and about how they cooperate and work with officers from city, state, and county police departments. This sheriff's deputy might just be one of those officers from a local county sheriff's department. He's representing one of the many local law enforcement representatives that annually help out at the camp. With all the rural and industrial land in Indiana, the chances are high that a youngster sometime may run across some kind of abandoned explosive. For that reason, one of the demonstrations at Respect for Law Camp deals with explosives, anything from fireworks to discarded dynamite and blasting caps. The students are taught what to watch out for and to stay away from any suspicious explosive, especially if it's smoking. And wait because you never know when it may just go off. While discarded explosives are a serious problem, teenage drug use is an infinitely more serious problem. These sixth and seventh graders are right at an age when many are first exposed to drug use. They need to know 
and to understand. This narcotics officer knows he's been there, and he can explain the hazards of drug abuse honestly and objectively. Take a step further. Marijuana smoking, two joints per day for six months or more, you begin running the risk of lung cancer. whoop de doo that's got to be the obvious response, because dad or mom, please show me your cigarettes. What's it say on the side? The Surgeon General has determined that smoking cigarettes may be harmful to your health. I didn't want to show you this, mom and dad. This is a bag of pot. Nowhere on here has the Surgeon General written anything <laughs> saying that this might cause harm. So what's the big deal? If you smoke marijuana at the rate of two joints per day for six months or more, you run the risk of getting lung cancer ten times quicker than the person that smokes one pack of cigarettes a day. In fact, in, in about six months, three to six months, two joints to five joints per day, you develop the same precancerous lesions in the lungs that you find with a cigarette smoker who smokes one pack of cigarettes per day for 25 or 30 years. That's frightening. To me it is. Now, if there was a deterrent, that's got to be it. After all this learning, every kid wants to have some fun. Recreation time at Respect for Law Camp is not forgotten. A free swim and some swimming and diving instruction is made available to all students. A demonstration is given by members of the State Police Underwater Recovery Team. That is, when they can escape from the grasp of some of the rowdier boys. For the students who have done especially well in their classwork, rides in the state police helicopter can become the highlight of their stay at the camp. Controlled by one of the skilled pilots of the Indiana State Police Air Section, the helicopter flies over the trees and buildings that make up the college campus. It's a unique ride that many people never experience in a lifetime. All the swimming and flying can make anybody hungry. Meals are held at the student union building, giving the student an opportunity to sample at least a small part of what college life is all about. Many of the students will be spending a weekend away from mom and dad for the first time. I think this is very important at this age. Uh, the students, when they're on campus, will be housed in one of the dormitories. There are stu four students per room. They have their own private shower. And as I mentioned earlier, the staffing is uh, as co-ed also. Sunday mornings are traditionally set aside for church going and respect for law camp is no different. State Police Chaplain Father Richard Cooley gives a thought-provoking non-denominational service in the University Chapel. Finally, the weekend of fun and learning is topped off with an awards banquet. Family and friends of the Respect for Law campers are invited to join in the celebration as each boy and girl is individually recognized. Counselors are also recognized and most leave with a few words for the campers. A guest speaker livens things up, especially when his speech tells about a telephone call from God. Hello? Hello, yes? Yes, speaking. Long distance, you said. Yes? Who? Are you sure, operator? Operator, are you are you positive? This, this you say it's calls from heaven. It's not correct, is it? <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, hello, Lord. Yes, sir. Well, Lord. Yes. Well, I'm glad you called. Yes, sir. You say you haven't heard from me for a while. Well, Lord, just the other night I told the wife I was going to say my prayers. I know it's been a long time since I prayed, but I said to my wife, Bill, and I, we were lying there in bed watching the Johnny Carson show. And I said, "Hon, you know, when this show goes off, I'm going to say my prayers. Sir? Well, by the time that show went off, I was awfully tired, and, uh, and, I, and I guess I just forgot. But Lord, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to start saying my prayers. Yes, sir. I'll, I'll, I'll say my prayers every night, whether I need to or not. Yes, sir. Do I go to church? Oh, yes, sir, I go to church. Yes, sir. Every Sunday. Well, almost every Sunday, yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir, I go Sunday night. Our church has Sunday night services. I go every Sunday. Well, I, sometimes I go Sunday night, yes, sir. <laughs> Last Sunday night? No, sir. <laughs> oh, uh, do I work at the church? Oh, I've been known to, yes, sir. <laughs> well, the last time, let's see, last time I did some work at the church was, uh, oh, I know, I went by the church one day. I had... Uh, uh, I had a flat, the wife had a flat while she was out in the car, and uh, 
and I didn't have my bumper jack, so I went over to the church and uh, to borrow the pastor's uh, bumper jack, and it was raining outside, so he went out to, uh, to get it out of his truck, and he said he'd change the tire for me if I'd sit in the office and answer the phone. <laughs> that doesn't count. <laughs> Am I a good neighbor and a good influence on my kids? Oh, yes, sir. Sir? You mean what I said when I got the, my thumb caught in the closet door? You heard that? <laughs> but, Lord, I, I'm good for the neighbors. I mean, I, sir? Oh, no, sir, we don't gossip. No, sir. What we say about our neighbors is true. <laughs> We don't we tell the people we tell they don't go any further now it's just between us we don't want to run them down even if they are sorry <laughs> sir yes sir well yes sir I, I think i get i think i'm getting the point sir yes sir. yes sir i'm going to do better and thanks for calling for uh, operator are you sure this wasn't collect <laughs> the banquet concludes with a special ceremony Outside, as the sun drops lower in the sky and the evening breeze turns calm, the American flag is lowered and folded, bringing to an end a weekend of fun and learning, of fellowship and respect. Many of these students will return next year. Some will come back three or four more times until they are old enough to attend career camp, a week-long camp sponsored by the Indiana State Police and the Indiana Kiwanis Clubs. But for now, they're enjoying what's left of their weekend at Respect for Law Camp. <laughs>